I remember attending segregated school initially. I was a student at um, Douglas from kindergarten through second grade. And then we moved to Quindaro and I was a student at Quindaro School, one of the original families that integrated Quindaro School. You know, we had good family structure. My mother was part of the um, PTA and she was always at the school. So we didn't have any choice but to be good kids. So we made it through just fine. Well, education was always important in, our, in my family life. In fact, um, being an excellent student was also very important. So I was honor roll, I mean, all the way through. I was uh, a member of the National Honor Society as well as a member of the National Art Honor Society in high school. It was a given that we were going to go to college. I was the first of the five children, I was the oldest, but all of us are college graduates. So that was, that was understood. I mean, there wasn't even a discussion about it. It was understood. Um, but when I finally declared a major, it was American Studies because it was a combination of humanities as well as literature, as well as everything American and art. I went on and got a, uh, an education degree as well. Um, the, the really cool thing about it, m many, many years later, I addressed an American Studies um, convention or conference in Turkey as a keynote speaker. And that was because I was an American Studies major. We were involved in the civil rights movement, you know, from the very beginning. I remember when Martin Luther King came to Kansas City, Kansas. Um, I was 12. It was funny because I was sitting on an aisle seat and when he walked by, he and I were the same height. We looked each other in the eye. The civil rights movement though is, I think, molded me in ways that I could not imagine not being involved in it. Um, it, get, it got me involved with people of all kinds. Um, it got me um, really interested in watching the newspaper because I was always looking for the story uh, in the newspaper of the kinds of activities that we were involved in as a family. Um, my dad was a policeman, so he could not be personally involved, but he was always supportive of us. And that was our job after school. You know, we would go pick at somebody. <laughs> so I, that's how I grew up. I've always thought of myself as an artist, um, but I, artist slash activist, but I didn't see that they were mutually exclusive. It was part of being the same thing. Um, as an artist, my job was, is to document what's going on in the community, and that's what I do. Even though I'm a quilter, not a painter, um, my quilts tell stories, they always have. I enjoy the idea of putting images onto fabric because it's not intimidating. It's not like painting or sculpting where people can go, can you know, make opinions or, or um, people tend to relate to what I do because it's just fabric. I choose issues. Many of them are women's issues and issues of empowerment for people. Um, I was contacted by um, a person who was um, coordinating the Chiefs program and went over and met with them and toured the stadium. And I created a piece about Quindaro. The piece is called Connecting Threads. It is three women, an African-American woman, a, a, a Caucasian woman, and a Native American woman sitting together on the Quindaro Bluff, quilting the North Star. The North Star was a symbol of freedom for runaway slaves. A lot of times I use recycled fabrics, and because recycling is part of um, environmental issues, um, I was chosen as a delegate to the International Conference on Environment and Development in Rio de Janeiro in 1992 because of the Quindaro quilt, because it told the story of O Quindaro, and because Quindaro is located on the Missouri River upstream from the water intake of Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri, and it was an environmental issue. So I went to um, Rio back in 92 and told the story of Quindaro, took the quilt, um, so that people 
the United Nations sponsored that conference, people all over the world got to see it. As a result of that, I was invited to go to Kenya and Tanzania to teach um, African women recycling fabric and into quilts. I did that. I got a grant to do a project with students in Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools. I wanted to do something that introduced them to traditional heroes, um, people who lived in the neighborhoods that they live in and have made tremendous strides in all kinds of activities, whatever they decided to do in their lives, and they have done that. And there are people who would be considered poor now, people who would be considered disadvantaged, people who would just all kinds of, you know, same kinds of issues that kids today deal with that those people deal with and have overcame. People need to tell their stories. I mean, even little kids need to, need to say what it is that they want, what they believe, what they stand for, what they, what they recognize as, as being um, proper and pure and, and something to strive for. When I create um, community quilt projects, it's all about people telling what it is that they want to do. I did a large project at UMKC. They asked me to make a quilt for the 40th anniversary of the Women's Center, and I told them if I did it, it would be my quilt. And the story of the Women's Center needed to be told by the people who use the Women's Center or who would possibly use the Women's Center. So what we did was allow people, anybody who wanted to, to come and create a 12 inch by 12 inch square telling a story of women's issues. We were looking for 40 images and we ended up with more than 100. The world is not that big. You don't have a whole lot of time. My mother used to say, you go and get whatever you can get, you know, because once you get it, they can't take it away from you. That, that has to having to do with education, not money. Learn about everything that you can learn about. Be curious, you know, go out there and just don't be afraid. Try to do things that scare you. <laughs> um, it's amazing how much you learn about yourself and about everything else around you just by trying some things. And I'm still doing that. I go off every week and try something brand new. I'll get in my car and go anywhere. It, it doesn't even matter to me. The only time you have is now. You know, yesterday's gone. There's nothing you can do about that. And tomorrow's not promised. So you take whatever you can do with the moment that you are in and do your very, very best. So that's how I live.